us. So a couple of the first big announcements, just so you guys know, there will be a replay. It will be on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe to Broward Real Estate Investors Association, Ryan and I constantly get the question, hey, I got it. And we understand you're at work. You can't watch everything. Every one of our um, replays are on our YouTube channel. We have well over 400, I think 400, 500 videos already. Um, yeah. During COVID, I don't even know how many hours of information we do have too. So um, again, subscribe to it. It's the easiest way to watch it, replay, all the above too. So Absolutely. Um, again, you know, we are very happy that you're with us. Um, I do see a lot of people, some students. Uh, I see a lot of familiar names actually all the way through. So uh, I'm surprised you guys aren't sick of us yet. <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and if you guys actually come to the office, you'll actually see I am wearing pants. So I know that's uh, after everyone being zoomed out, I always wonder now if anyone's ever actually wearing pants. So um, we, we, we do wear pants. <laughs> so that's number one. <clears throat> Bless you. And, um, you know, the other thing is also, uh, if you're like me, you know, um, especially us local people, uh, Miami Heat fans, I know you're all geared up for the game tonight. Um, if you're a Lakers fan, I'm not going to teach you anything. Uh, give me a heck yeah if you're a, uh, a Miami Heat fan. Uh, so that's going to be important. And uh, yeah, I know, Jeffrey, too much information wearing pants. I got gotcha. you. Uh, so, <laughs> so again, we want to make this interactive. Uh, my name is Anish Dave. Uh, I'm one of the owners of the Broward Real Estate Investors Association, the Miami Dade Real Estate Investors Association, and our wholesale, uh, wholesale division, WJL Financial uh, or WJL Properties. Um, Ryan and I have actually been friends first. I'll start with that for about 20 plus years. Uh, we still joke about, I'll have to look at some old photos. I think you knew me when I had hair. I'm not sure I were, or maybe stubble, I was, or I was just trying to keep that little bit right here, you know, the comb over. <laughs> so, um, but my background is, uh, you know, 20 years in real estate. I worked in corporate America for a long time. Um, I'm Indian. I grew up in Jersey. That's where the sarcasm comes in a little bit. Um, been a licensed real estate agent since 2002. Uh, licensed mortgage guy since 1999. I worked in banking and finance. I worked at all the major banks, it feels like. Uh, as soon as the bank got bought out or consolidated, I felt like I was the first one to lose my job because I got paid too much. So um, that was a little bit of a challenge. I was also tired of working in a cubicle. Um, begging for, you know, my two weeks vacation, uh, my 15 minute break. And uh, I was just getting tired of, uh, you know, people uh, controlling my destiny or my income. So that's where, um, you know, but my passion's always been real estate. Uh, luckily, you know, um, I, I started reading all the Rich Dad, Poor Dad books, uh, took a national program. So those national programs, those HD TV guys. Um, I did one of those programs with Ryan. Uh, we spent well over $50,000 each back then, and that was in 2007. I was up to 28 properties in the height of uh, the market before the Great Recession, uh, $3 million worth of inventory. Uh, and I kind of joke about it is that, you know, I said, hey, by the time I'm 40, I want to be done. And uh, unfortunately, I was done meaning I lost everything and had to file bankruptcy. So uh, luckily, you know, we stuck with it with real estate. Um, again, my option was going back to corporate America and I didn't want to go back to corporate America. And uh, luckily wholesale, you know, real estate is what got me out of the dumps is the easiest way I could say it. Uh, got me off my cousin's couch, uh, got me out of that 1994 Toyota Corolla with 300,000 miles or so. Uh, so, and that was only 10 years ago. That's the funny part. It seems like a lifetime ago, too. So, And uh, I'll let Ryan introduce himself a little bit today. So I'm the other owner of the Broward and Miami-Dade Real Estate Investor Association. Like Anish said, we also own WJL, which is now becoming WJL Properties. That's our wholesale division. Uh, we don't just teach and educate people on how to wholesale. We are actually wholesalers ourselves and are actively with our team wholesaling properties every day, selling properties. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that you guys get on our cash buyers list. Um, I know that at some point, Jez is going to put in the link in the uh, chat box. 
um, so that you guys can get on our buyers list as well. And even if you're not buying properties, it's always good to get on people's buyers list so that you can see what types of properties are selling, what prices they're selling for, just to kind of you know gauge the market a little bit. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old. Um, I've, I've worked for people in and out, waiting tables of bartending, trying to build different businesses, uh, which unfortunately all failed one after the other <laughs> for quite a few years. I mean, that's the life of being an entrepreneur. But uh, when I got into real estate, which actually initially got me into real estate about 20 years ago, um, started out like everybody else became a real estate agent. Um, and then I was doing conversions uh, with the third largest developer and converter developer in the state of Florida. We were converting multifamily units into condos, um, not with my money. I, I wasn't uh, uh, the owner of the company at that time. I was running the sales and marketing and the conversion department, but learned a lot about that and the aspect of, of real estate investing. Um, started doing some rehabs with a niche uh, back in like 2003 ish, somewhere around there. Uh, we owned another company called the Urban Life Design Group, helping families and single mothers of low income obtain home ownership opportunities. And then unfortunately, the market crashed in 2007 and 8, lost absolutely everything, declared bankruptcy. Um, they took my car, but I was living downtown Miami on 6th and Flagler, so I was able to walk across the Flagler Street Bridge to attend my bankruptcy hearing. And, um, and, you know, after feeling sorry for myself and, you know, spending six months, hard time getting out of, out of bed, literally, um, you know, I said, you know what, got to get back up on that horse and, and real estate um, is, is that, you know, that vehicle that can really change your life. And um, Anish and I just, you know, got restarted, you know, we mustered up the, the strength to stop feeling sorry for ourselves and, and get moving again. We came to Bria. And uh, we joined their mentor program, um, which was very different than our mentor program now. Um, and uh, Nish and I became the two top students in the history of the program. Bill and Jan Leon, who started Bria um, over 20 years ago, and they started WJL Financial in 1989, um, they uh, asked us to take over and, and redo their, their mentor program. Um, so we did that, um, uh, that was about what, 2012, 2013, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's right. um, almost, yeah, eight years almost, yeah. yeah. And then we bought all of the companies from them. And part of the reason why we tell you guys this story is that it's not to make Anish and I like the heroes of the day, it's wholesaling. This business that we're teaching you guys that we're talking about this morning is literally the business that brought two guys back completely from the dead, bankrupt, busted, I had $997 in my bank account to then being able to buy all of the companies from our mentors. And I know Anish, I don't know if he mentioned this, but um, his parents, unfortunately, in the crash of the market, lost their house. And he was able to come back strong enough to buy them a new house in cash. That's what this business and that's what real estate can do for you. And that's why we want to teach this to you guys today. Um, Anish, I'll just let you know, since I'm screen sharing, Zoom is not uh, allowing me to... Uh, Look at the uh, Q and A, so you'll actually have to, to go through the uh, the Q and A, and I'll I'll go through this the, the presentation here. Sure, actually, let me see if I could kind of fix that for you. Let's see if that works. In the oh. there we go. Um, in the meantime, guys, we have a. Um, an offer for you guys today. Uh, we told everyone, you know, when you registered uh, that we give you an opportunity to win a free one year membership uh, to our organizations. And, um, you know, there's a lot of benefits to that. We have special programs with Home Depot, Office Depot, uh, Rent Perfect, and many other national companies that our members all get discounts on. Um, and this is also getting discounts on webinars, seminars, uh, some of them that are paid, not free like today. And we will be having our main meetings again, I'm sure, in 2021 as we're thinking po you know, positively about all of this. So you will get free entry to all those meetings as well. So text the word BRIA. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. I think we're doing membership now. Yep, I think it's membership. Yeah. So instead of the word BRIA, guys, um, you're going to text the word membership. Uh, and I'm actually just going to change that real quick because I know that's going to cause uh, some issues there. <laughs> and, and also uh, a couple other things too. Ryan uh, did not mention also, he is the president of National RIA. 
Uh, he is the youngest president of National RIA history. Uh, that's over 40,000 plus members, 120 chapters and affiliates. If you guys are checking online, you're going to see RIAs or meetups or luncheons, you, all the above. We are the only approved chapter in Dade in Broward County. And I always think that's important because, uh, you know, as approved chapters, they do financial background checks on us, criminal background, we have compliance. So you want to make sure you're actually uh, working with a company that has been approved. Uh, some of the other things that we've also done in the last couple of years, uh, since I'm, I'm a pretty big sports fan, uh, give me a, a raise your hand if you're a big sports fan uh, also. Uh, but Ryan and I were lucky enough to actually do a special boot camp for the Miami Dolphins, uh, uh, about 14 Miami Dolphin players. And, and it was pretty awesome. Right? These, those guys were beyond polite smart. Um, if you're a football fan, that includes people like uh, Cameron Wake, Kenny Stills. Uh, we were joking, Cameron Wake who probably made over 55 million in his career. And he's learning how to do real estate too. So I think it's always important that you, you really work with people that know what they're doing. Um, Stephen Ross, the owner of the Dolphins, is a real estate guy. So what he wanted to do, and I think this is pretty cool, is that he wanted to basically teach his players to do something outside of football. And their passion was real estate. So Ryan and I actually, it took us about eight or nine months to get approved with the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. um, I know they didn't ask us for our blood type, but they might as well have. <laughs> they couldn't have, I always say they can't have two, you know, idiots get in front of their, you know, $2 billion company, just trying to teach them real estate too. So you want to make sure, um, you know, you're, you're with the right team. Uh, one of the things is I was talking about the memberships. So one of the benefits with us or a National RIA chapter is that you get benefits at Home Depot. Uh, that's 20% off paint, 2% rebates, uh, Office Depot. We've actually done printing uh, internally and, and our bill is about 1300 bucks and we only paid 400 bucks. So that's also included. If you're a landlord, rent perfect. It actually does tenant screening. Uh, it's the cost of tenant screening as a member on our side, it's 95 cents. That is correct, 95 cents. But your tenant will pay $35 for the application. So uh, if you're a landlord, you're gonna wanna use that. You wanna make sure you have the right tenants. Uh, their technology is pretty awesome. You could actually see your tenant upload bank statements, uh, W-2s, uh, pay stubs, and and I think that's really important that you actually get to know who your tenants are. Uh, besides that, equity trusts, if you are using your self-directed IRA uh, for real estate, you wanna use equity trusts. So they're waiving $720 worth of fees. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to equity trust or a self-directed IRA, you should probably hit me up at one point. And uh, we've had equity trusts do webinars before, so they're pretty, Awesome. And then the other thing is we always have special events and there's always member pricing and non-member pricing. So there's usually a discount for member pricing. Uh, when we do go back to live events, members are free to come to the events to our monthly meetings versus the $25 charge. So uh, for the 249 bucks, uh, you get all these benefits. Uh, to give you an idea, as national RIA members, uh, around the country, we spent close to 1.8 billion, that's with a B, dollars at Home Depot. So we're adding more uh, companies, including IDI Core. There's well over 15 different national RIA benefits. And you can actually find out all those benefits on our website too. So uh, make reason, sure you sign up. Yeah, guys, the reason why, you know, Anish is going through all this is because you know, in real estate, what got Anish and I back into the game was we found the Broward Real Estate Investors Association. Um, and that's why we want you guys to find us as a destination because that's really what RIA and MD RIA are all about. We're all about education, networking, um, you know, having those resources that you need to really be successful in real estate. So, um, so that's important. You know, even if you're, even if you don't win the raffle on the membership, if you really want to get into, to, you know, real estate, then um, you, know, you, you really need to think about getting a membership and just getting involved, staying engaged. Perfect, and, and let's get started to the good stuff, right? That's why you're here today. Uh, so what is wholesaling? Um, if you guys want to chat, put in maybe two or three words, what is wholesaling? 
uh, to give us a good idea to see how many people know. Because I know a lot of you guys have been on YouTube University. Um, like wholesaling is like chic now, right? Oh yeah, I just, I wholesale that. What, what does that mean, right? And that's one of the things that we want to know if you know what wholesaling means. I'll give you a quick second. I got it. Maria saying assigning a contract. It's a type. Transferring title without performing any action. Buying cheap and selling for profit. Yep, keep going. Anyone else? The art of finding discounted properties. Okay, Sean, that's pretty good. So what wholesaling is, is you buy low and you sell low. What the heck does that mean, right? Meaning you have to leave enough room for the other person to buy or make money, I should say. So what happens a lot of times for Ryan and I is, you know, you guys find great deals, right? Or you think that's a great deal. Hey, I'm gonna get it under contract and Anish, this is a great deal. I'm going to sell it to you for 200000 and I'm going to wholesale it to you. So what we always hear is that when you're wholesaling, you have to leave enough room for the other person to make money. Am I going to rehab it? Am I going to use it as a rental? I always tell you, Ryan will tell you the same thing, is if, in, if 30 seconds or less, you can't, tell some, you can't tell me how I'm going to make money, it's probably not a deal. And I'll, and I'll give you the perfect example is, you find a property, it's worth $200,000 and you get it under contract for one seventy-five. dollars And now at one seventy-five, dollars you're telling me I'm going to sell it to you for one ninety. dollars Okay. And what am I going to do with it? Right? So a lot of times when, when people are looking for um, deals, they're saying, okay, and then she got $10,000 worth of equity. And, and I always say, well, I really don't because this is not HDTV, right? There's gonna be closing costs, money costs. So what we're really looking for when it comes to a good deal is motivated sellers. And motivation, I always tell people, if motivation is only money, I want the top amount of money I get for my house, they're not motivated, right? And motivation ideally should be people in pre-foreclosure, which you'll be surprised. Um, some people in pre-foreclosure are not actually motivated. Um, or, you know, um, probate, right? Somebody passes away and they leave a property, especially here in South Florida. Uh, we do have a lot of people from out of state, their kids live in Chicago, New Jersey. And unfortunately someone passes away and they leave a house. Remember these, you know, heirs are not real estate investors. So for, for them, they wanna just, I hate to say it, they just want their money. Uh, I'll, I remember one of the first calls I ever made on probate. I was so scared, like, oh my God, what am I going to tell them? Um, I know someone just passed away. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And, and the funny part was they're like, okay, great. Thanks, Anish. I know you're sorry about it. What can you pay me? You know, how fast can you close? So what we're looking is for motivated sellers. Generally speaking, and you guys probably hear this when you're talking about driving for dollars or going to um, different neighborhoods and you're looking for overgrown grass or mail uh, pouring out of the mailbox. But we've also done deals where the house was perfect actually. And unfortunately they had an issue, um, whether it was medical, it could be an IRS lien and they, ne they needed money quick. So they wanted that motivation. Um, I know one of the questions I always get is uh, um, if there's equity in the house, why don't they list the property? And actually what I'm gonna find out also from you guys is how many of you guys are realtors? Um, because that's important for us too. And yeah, the reason we want to- We had a couple questions in the Q and A yeah. about, I, I, yeah. answered, I answered a couple of those. Um, and I actually, um, I actually do have access here to the, um, uh, to the Q and A. So let me go through just a couple quick ones while yeah, you can yeah. find the poll if you're currently a licensed real estate agent. Um, actually, it says the niche hosts and panelists can't vote. Okay. So while you oh, check yeah. that poll. Um, okay, so I got a question from uh, Jared. Looking at uh, market predictions, what's the research showing about residential inventory in South Florida, both currently in the next six months, and what about for the rest of the country? So one of the things is, guys, is that, you know, Jared, I don't know if you're wholesaling here locally or if you're wholesaling nationally, but one of the things about getting started in this business is that we tend to see that you guys 
people that want to get in this business are thinking way too much, way too big, um, instead of just thinking about their own backyard. But here's what I'll tell you about, you know, the market predictions as far as what we see. We have seen um, a bit of an increase in the retail market itself um, during this COVID. Uh, a lot of that in Florida um, has been related to the fact of how many people moved from New York um, to here. A lot of real estate agents in our network that Anish and I uh, are in contact with um, had, uh, you know, um, let us know that they have a lot of clients coming down from New York and buying properties here. So uh, the retail market here is starting, you know, was starting to flourish. Um, the rental market, as far as buying and picking up rental properties, has been difficult because, as you can imagine, if the, if the rental property has renters in it, if they're not making their rental payments, um, then a lot of those properties are not even being marketed for sale right now uh, unless uh, they're very, very motivated to sell that property and they, they need the cash from it. Um, so <clears throat> in regards to what we're looking at over the next six months, is and this is what we're going to be talking about today and we'll be talking about this a little bit too at the end there's going to be a flood of foreclosures that's coming that's an opportunity we don't wish for these kind of situations but once those moratoriums um, are lifted december 31st and the moratorium is on the foreclosure sale dates um, right now people still are getting foreclosed on but if they can show um, due to, to COVID related, or if they are a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac uh, mortgage, um, then, uh, then they're not getting um, you know, a foreclosure sale date. They're, they're still getting up to that point, And then the court's just basically waiting until they can foreclose um, on a lot of people. So there's gonna be a flood in the market that's gonna drop the housing prices, uh, and that's gonna create just a vast opportunity of motivated sellers. And as, as far as the rest of the country, I think it's probably gonna look very similar around the rest of the country. Um, there are pockets in different markets like New York, California, um, Chicago, there, there's, you know, um, there's gonna be a little bit differences in those markets. But again, unless you're wholesaling in every single state, I don't care what's happening in the rest of the country. I only care what's happening in my backyard and where I'm wholesaling. So for you guys, especially starting out, let's just assume that you guys should only be here in one county, not even in the tri-county area. You guys should be in like three to five zip codes to start out and that's it. Like, like starting out small, um, you're gonna see a, a lot of opportunity. There's gonna be a lot of motivated sellers because there's gonna be a lot of, of foreclosures that are gonna be coming through. Um, and that, I was just gonna add, the only thing I would add to it also is that um, don't worry about the macroeconomics. Uh, Ryan and I are averaging well over $25,000 per deal. If you do two deals a month on your own, how do you think the market is, right? So don't worry about, you know, I like reading all the macroeconomics, but it's going to either talk you in or out of getting into real estate or trying to buy it on the dip. One of the things is, uh, even in 2008, you don't know the dip until later, right? You don't know when it's going to end. Yeah, in 2012, they're saying, oh, yeah, that 2008 this month was the dip. So uh, don't worry about that portion of it, too. So I think that's important. And the next three questions are all from, from the same person. And um, the questions range from what steps do I need to take to get ready for foreclosures about to hit the market? What's the best way to find distressed homeowners? And then where can I learn all about probate? So guys, I'm not picking on you. Um, I'm not going to say your name because I don't want to put you on blast, uh, make you feel bad. But this, this is actually good information that I'm giving you. I'm giving you some constructive criticism here, okay? When someone's new to the business, and I can tell from these questions that you're new to the business. When someone's new to the business and they're already asking about probates and you know, distressed properties and foreclosures and you're all over the place, guys, that's the problem. YouTube University, I'm reading these books, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You've got to finite and really focus in your area, okay? Um, and even though there's going to be some opportunities of probates and things that will come up, the reality is, is that... Um, uh, you know, pre foreclosures, the foreclosure market distress, those distressed properties are going to be more specific that are going to be flooding the market and to know how to, to get into those and to answer your questions about how do I learn about probates? How do I learn about, you know, foreclosures and getting prepared? We are going to answer those questions throughout this presentation. So just hold on and we will get to those, but I just want you guys to understand don't be all over the place. Um, you know, if you're going to learn probates, learn probates. 
but the opportunity is probably the mass, mass majority of the opportunity over the next two years to three years is going to be the people facing foreclosures. Um, so that's what we would promote for you guys to, um, you know, to concentrate on. Absolutely. And then I do see like um, more than a quarter of you guys are real estate agents. Uh, again, Ryan and I are both licensed. First of all, I think you guys work way too hard for your commission. I don't care what anyone else says. Uh, my non-realtor friends are always like, it's easy being a realtor. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you think it's, if it's uh, not that easy being a realtor so out of those realtor friends. Uh, the other thing is you do not need to have a real estate license to actually be an investor. Uh, the other, th uh, the way I look at it is, do you want to be a realtor or do you want to be an investor? One or the other. How many people want to be a doctor and a dentist at the same time? Uh, the people that are licensed as a real estate agent, uh, they're going to let you know that um, when you take the class, you're, you don't even learn how to fill out contracts. So it's learning the law about real estate investing. Uh, as you move forward, you're going to start building your team. Uh, as long as you have a realtor on the end uh, or on your team, when you start doing rehabs, that can actually you know, help you and you'll save the 3%. So I think that's always important uh, as we go about you know, uh, um, real estate and having you know, a real estate license. Of course, there's fees on it uh, too. Again, we have very successful real estate friends that are agents. Um, for me, I used to sell high end for a while and I, I don't have the bandwidth to show multi-million dollar homes or the patients that some of you guys do out there. So that's one of the things that's important. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's talk about the wholesaling properties, you know, assignments versus double closings. So how many people have actually done an assignment of contract? Give me a thumbs up or give me a yes. I've actually done an assignment of contract or, you know, so that gives me a good idea. And, and I know I got a couple not yet. I got a couple, yes, Raphael, Ralph. Quinton's working on his first one. Okay, awesome. So one of the things that when you actually do an assignment of contract, right? So A is the uh, seller, B is the buyer. And why we actually assign contracts? There's a couple of different things. You know, obviously if you're looking on, you know, um, YouTube University, you know, no credit, no money, um, all the above. So the idea is to get something under contract. So you're going to go to the seller, right? And let's say, you know, you get it under contract for a hundred thousand dollars and, you know, you get it under contract and you, you, first of all, you need a deposit. So how much money would you guys put down for a deposit, right? Let's say Ryan's the seller and you're the buyer. How much money would you put down? As a, as a deposit, what's fair? I know my YouTube universities, I always crack up $10, a dollar, a gold watch. I see $100, $500, couple thousand, thousand to 5,000, 5%, 5 right? So legally, right, you do need to put consideration. That's an earnest money deposit, EMD, you know that? and, and you have to put a deposit down to make it a valid contract. And it's true. You could put $10 down. It is a valid deposit. So I know we have some realtor people also, realtors on board. How would you feel if you saw a contract? I'm buying your house for $200,000 and I decide to put $10 down. How many people, give me a thumbs up if you think that that's a fair deposit. Oh, Maggie's laughing. Okay, yeah. I agree, right? $10, right? Joke, yep. Casper, not at all. So I'm not gonna, I know Ryan's from Ohio, so I'm not gonna pick on Ohio. The houses sometimes are there like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So it is possible to put a $10 deposit in. That is 100% true. The reality is, you know, most people aren't gonna take you seriously. And they're not gonna take you seriously because $10, I mean, really? You're a cash buyer, $200,000 and you're gonna put a $10 deposit. Oh, my bad, I meant to put $100 down, I'm sorry, right? Same thing. So for us, Ryan and I, you know, I would say minimum $500. Ryan and I always put a minimum of $1,000 deposit on a contract. And I always think, you know, where it's important to put a, 
a, a sizable deposit. I know some people put one, one to 5%. The more you put down, the more serious the seller is gonna think. So if you do have 5,000, 10,000, uh, Ryan and I actually went under contract a couple of years ago on a $5 million house and we put $50,000 down. Again, it depends how much budget, how, you know, what your budget is. And you do really have to put a deposit down. So that was the other question. Just because you put it on the contract, do I really need to put a deposit down? Absolutely. So I think that's very important that you come up with a fair deposit. The second end of it is you're going to use a FAR bar as its contract. So I know a lot of you guys, um, if you've done any national programs out there, and if you've actually um, done their programs, their contract is four to five pages. We want you to use a Florida FAR bar as its contract. Um, if you don't have access to it, altastar.com is where you could actually get the licensing for contracts. So the question is, right now I'm going under contract for $200,000 with the seller. How much, how many inspection days would you put, right? On the contract? What's, what's a fair amount of inspection days? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Would I put zero, seven? I see three to seven, seven to 10. Tony's giving me 10. Casper is looking for 30. Two weeks, 15. Okay, so great. So we ideally, right, um, the more inspection days, the better. But realistically, in our market, we could do it with five to seven days. Can we do it with two days? We can't. We can absolutely do it in two days, inspection, if the seller pushes. But the question becomes, what are you doing during those inspection days? Are you sending your contractor out there? Are you sending your inspector? One or two words, what, what is the purpose of inspection days? Anyone? Finding a buyer. Oh, Latani, of course, good answer. Latani's one of our students. Right answer, right? Due diligence, buy you time. All those are all very good answers, right? What we're looking to do is find a buyer for our property because we want to wholesale it, right? I'm not looking to move in. I already have a home. So we're not going to spend money on an inspector. But what we're doing is we're buying time for us to find our own buyer. So ideally, we want to do seven or 10 days. The more, the merrier. Um, 30 days is probably not possible, especially if you have a 30-day closing. So um, again, we're going to find a buyer. So now, the, the, the advantages of actually doing an assignment of a contract is there's only one set of closing costs. So let's say, you know, Ryan beats me up and, you know, the best I could get is for 200000 I put a $1,000 deposit and now I send it out to my buyer's list for two twenty. And, you know, um, uh, Jacqueline, one of my buyers, right? She goes, Anish, the most I could do is two oh seven. You know, that's it, I can't do it. And we, we, you know, we had all these people go out there and she's my only buyer. Well, now if I close on the property, there's gonna be two sets of closing costs, right? There's gonna be title insurance, deed, stamps, money costs if I don't really have the money, if it's transactional funding. And guess what? I did a nice job of making no money. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out and I'm just picking on Jacqueline. I know she was actually, she's one of our new members. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Ryan together with Jacqueline. So guess what? Good news, bad news to the homeowner. Hey, you're still getting your $200,000, but I'm not the buyer. I have one of my partnering investors, Jacqueline. She's going to keep it and rent it out or whatever she's going to do it for 207. So I'm going to step out of the deal. I'm going to do an assignment and contract and I will collect $7,000 at closing. Jacqueline's gonna take over my, my contract. So she's gonna look at it and say, okay, great, everything looks great. The second end of that question should be, when I found Jacqueline and we, we have a deal going on, how much money of a deposit or how much of a deposit am I gonna get from Jacqueline? Remember, I put $1,000 down. So how much money am I gonna get? And the second question is, how many inspection days am I gonna give her? So go ahead and put it into the chat. How many days would you give Jacqueline on inspection days? Remember, our inspection days are seven. 
Maggie's telling me she's going to give her three days, $7,000 down, five days, three days, one day. How much, and how much of a deposit? Remember, I put a thousand. One less than I have, three, seven, 8,000. Some pretty generous people. So what I'm going to tell you, you know, Ryan and I built this buyers list with well over 10,000 people. We have professional buyers that could actually walk the house with their contractors. So predominantly, we actually get zero days, zero days inspection, and we get $10,000 down. So if you've been added to our buyers list, that's what we're looking for. Because God forbid, you know, Jacqueline you know, doesn't decide to buy my house and I can't find any other buyers, Brian's going to keep my thousand bucks. I'm going to keep the other 10,000. So we're going to make about $9,000. Usually someone putting $10,000 down, they're not walking away from it. I'd say in eight years, I think we have that one hedge fund. Uh, I'd say maybe three or four buyers over eight years that we actually um, gave up uh, or took their deposit. So the idea is to protect yourself. If you actually wholesale and do it correctly in the assignment of contracts, there are no, there's no way you could lose money. If the seven days goes by and we can't find a buyer, you're going to do a quick cancellation or let's say Jacqueline, the most she'll pay is $200,000. We're going to try to reneg renegotiate with Ryan. Maybe I could get it for 198. Fine. I made $2,000. If not, you're going to cancel it and you're going to get your deposit back. Remember the deposits do not go to the seller. You're going to give it to your title company. So you want to use an investor friendly title company. We use independence title, not independent, independence. Kevin Thatcher, uh, we've done hundreds of deals with him. He's probably been on a, uh, he's been on a bunch of webinars. He's been on our boot camp. Uh, so you want to make sure you do have a title company that you're using. So let's talk about double closings. How many of you guys have actually done a double closing? I know a couple of you guys have done assignment of contracts. So if you guys give me an idea of how many people have done double closings. In the meantime, I've actually put a poll up there to see how many deals you guys have done in the last 12 months. So that will give us a good idea of how many people are new. And, and I do see that we have, uh, okay, some of you guys have done some deals. Okay. And by the way, the newbies, if you've done none, you're at the right place. Ryan and I, we, you know, we, we still joke about it. My first assignment of contract, I made $2,000. You would have thought I hit the lottery. Um, I was so happy. I was like, wow, I didn't do anything. I signed, I took some photos. I did a contract. Oof. Um, I do see some people have got five to nine deals, you know, which is awesome. And so let's talk about the double closings, right? So on YouTube University, right? All you ever hear is no money, um, assignments of contracts. So the first thing is, um, if it's a foreclosure or a short sale, you actually have to close on the property. Think of it this way the bank, they're losing money, you know, and Ryan's, you know, a savvy investor. And he says, Hey, I'm going to get it for 200. I'm going to uh, wholesale it out. And, you know, for $10,000 an assignment, a contract, and the bank's losing $60,000. They're going to say, uh, nice try, Ryan. Uh, no way. Um, we did this short. sale. you said you were buying it. So you have to close. Same thing with foreclosures. We're talking about how the market's going to change, you know, with the influx of foreclosures and short sales. If you don't have the money, you're not going to be able to close on it. So that's number one. Number two, what happens if you're making too much money on the deal? You want to do a double closing. So what's too much money? So internally, Ryan and I have done hundreds of deals over the years. And what we figured out, $15,000 is our magic number. So let's use the same situation where Ryan wants you know, a house and he wants $130,000. And I go in there and I say, listen, I'm a licensed real estate agent, uh, but guess what? No commissions. You're going to, you're going to save on commissions. Oh, by the way, I'm flexible. You need, you know, 60 days, you need 15 days. I could close fast or as slow as you want. Oh, by the way, you have liens. Okay. Not an issue for us because we know how to, uh, to um, get those liens down. So for us, it's not an issue. We agreed to a hundred thousand dollars. Now we sound it on our buyers list and, you know, I'm a little greedy. So I want $145,000 on, on, on this property. And now I get a lot of calls and, you know, out of our 10,000 plus buyers, we have eight people go to the house and our best offer is $130,000. 
And, you know, I say, you know, uh, I'll just pick on, you know, Jason. And Jason says, you know, the most I could do is 130. And I say, gosh, Jason, my numbers are really, really tight. Now, okay, fine, I'll do it for 130. And now, you know, Ryan, you know, when I got, I told him the same thing, my numbers were really tight. Now, if we do an assignment of contract, guess what? The buyer and seller are going to see a $30,000 assignment fee. How is Ryan going to feel about that as a seller? He's not going to be happy. He's going to be probably the nicest way, pissed. This is probably the easiest way I could say it. Um, and then I go to Jason and he sees I'm making 30,000. He's going to be like, oh my God, you jerk. You know, like, what do you mean? You said your numbers were tight. You know, I, I rehab the house, I might make 40. Uh, I'm never going to buy for you. So that there could be some major issues going on here. And one of the issues is, um, Jason might want to renegotiate my price. He's like, listen, I know Anish doesn't really have the money. The most I'll give him is 107. Wow, right? What am I else going to do? I rather really make $7,000 than making nothing. Ryan might say, you know what? I'm not signing, right? So you're going to hear about, you know, non-performance. Yes, we're under contract. But for me to actually sue Ryan for non-performance, it's going to cost me twenty dollars or $30,000. So instead, we're going to do a double closing. So the issue with, uh, or not an issue, but what's different about a double closing is there's two sets of closing costs. Remember, assignment of contract, one set of closing costs. So we're gonna have title insurance, we're gonna have stamps on the way out. So we're literally buying in the morning and we're selling in the afternoon. I'm gonna make sure I have Jason's money for the $130,000 first before I close with Ryan. I'm gonna wire my own money also. So you do really need your own money. Um, so companies like us, we actually do transactional funding. You could actually borrow the money for the day, but you do want to have a, a title company that understands double closings. So they are not illegal. This is illegal only if you're using uh, like conventional loans, FHA, that's illegal. That's mortgage fraud. So you want to make sure you're doing all this stuff right. And that's what, you know, Ryan and I have been averaging close to $25,000 per student deal. So when it comes to assignments of contracts, I would probably say it's probably less than 10% of the time that we actually assign a contract. And for all those guys that, you know, we're talking about these foreclosures and short sales, you're going to pass out on all those deals because you don't have the money. And, you know, especially on YouTube, I kind of joke about it because no one ever wants to talk about that. And, and that's one of the things that, because it's not sexy, right? You know, hey, you could do this out of your house and, and uh, you know, you only hear about the wins. Yeah, uh, Ryan and I probably get calls, yeah, I'd say three to four calls a month of people losing money on deals. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are on bigger pockets. How many people brag that, hey, I bought that house and lost $20,000. We actually get that call more often than not. So, so that's guys, what double closing is. Yeah, what you guys have to understand is that wholesaling nationally um, is uh, most people promoting uh, assignments of contracts so that they can make three to five thousand dollars per deal. That's what the national average is. We make twenty five thousand dollars average per wholesale property, but we do that by double closing. We do that by putting up the money. And the reality is, is that you know, like Anish said, you hear these advertisements. You can get into this business with no money, no credit. It's an absolute bold faced lie. You have to still have, even if you're just going to have earnest money deposit. Um, of $1,000, you still technically have to have some money that you're putting down. And you could choose to do deals where you're making, uh, you know, 2,500, 3,000, maybe 5,000, because honestly, most wholesaling uh, assignments that Anish and I see from other wholesalers here in South Florida are right around $3,000. So you'd have to do, um, how many assignments is that? Almost 10 assignments, finding 10 properties and selling 10 properties to do one property that we do double closing $25,000. But obviously you got to have, you know, you got to have the money or partner with someone that does have the money as well. Let me go through a few questions here just so we yep, can um, catch up. And if you guys have questions on the assignment versus double closing, a um, couple things really quickly to make a deal, I need to cooperate with the seller, which is selling myself being a better option um, than the realtor. What are the pros of an investor versus a realtor? So guys, it's real simple. Realtors are, that's a nine to five job. Yes, there are some realtors that make a lot of money, but you'd be very surprised to know 
that less than 0.1% of realtors all in the uh, um, state of Florida probably make enough money to live on. It is very few and far between realtors that actually make any money and they will chase a deal for months and deal with sellers and buyers and everything for months to make a $6,000 commission. So- And I'll just, add, I'll just add the quick end of that too, is uh, uh, as a cash buyer versus a realtor, uh, there's, you'll find out there's a lot of homeowners that um, first of all, don't like realtors. They don't want to pay any commissions. They think that they shouldn't have to pay commission. Uh, number two, they don't want to sign in front of their house, right? They've been living in the house for 20 years. They're in foreclosure. So they don't want their neighbors to know the condition of the house, right? My realtors, hey, if you fix this hat, we fix that. They don't want to deal with that. And also speed. So those are some of the benefits versus um, with a realtor also. So that's why, um, you know, people choose an investor because they want it to be easy if they're motivated. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Maggie was asking in pre foreclosures, um, there is a balance that is owed to the bank and it's usually not small. How do you deal with pre foreclosures? So that's a longer question, Maggie, that we're actually going to be answering this Saturday. Uh, we're going to be talking about off market properties and we're going to be talking more details on pre foreclosures. But in a sense, just to answer that, it's just like you buying any other property. If you're buying it for $100,000 and they owe $80,000, that means that when you buy it for $100,000, $80,000 of that is going to go to pay off their mortgage. So the seller is only going to pocket whatever is left over, which would be less than $20,000 because there's closing costs and that sort of thing. So whether there's a, a balance owed that's small or sometimes the balance that is owed is more than what we're actually wanting to buy the property for, and that's called a short sale. Um, and, and again, um, if you go, we've got a ton of videos on short sales and what they are and how we work them on our YouTube channel. And that was another question on here as well. Um, Jez, if you can put into the chat box, our YouTube channel, but guys just type into YouTube Broward real estate investors association. Um, and, uh, it's the one that has over 350 videos in it. You can't miss it. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. We also have, um, are you able to help us with resources such as PML and HML? And I know PML is probable maximum loss. And no, we're not going to talk about that because it has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. It has nothing to do with wholesaling. That's way too complicated. That seems a little bit analysis paralysis, to be honest with you, uh, because we don't lose money on our deals. Anish and I, knock on wood, haven't lost money on a single deal since we got back in this business in 2008 and 9. Uh, because we wholesale and we have those margins and even the rehabs that we do, we, we cherry pick and rehab properties and sell them full retail and we always have a good profit margin there. So even if we had to lower pricing or the market swayed a little bit, we're not going to lose money. Um, as far as for hard money lenders, yes, we have uh, hard money lenders um, that are uh, in our organization as well. Um, their information's on our, on our website or you can contact our office and um, or email us and we'll, we'll be more than happy to, uh, to give you guys, um, you know, those resources. That's what we're here for. The Broward Real Estate Investor Association has hard money lenders, title companies, attorneys, those kind of things. So, you know, those are resources that, that you know, we, we can help you guys with. Um, 12-31-20 for foreclosures. I thought it was 10-1-20 uh, for foreclosures. We're opening up, uh, but when exactly for South Florida is expected to have a higher inventory. So no, um, it's not 10-1. The, the governor of Florida did not extend the, hit the moratorium, but the federal moratorium came out um, and it is, it is till December 31st, 2020, okay? And that's gonna be Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's, uh, Freddie Mac backs, uh, uh, mortgages. Um, but here's the reality guys too, is that again, like Anish said, don't pay attention to all the noise. I don't really care that much about the moratorium right now because we are still out there knocking on doors, calling homeowners, uh, sending out our letters, and we are still getting deals right now. It depends upon who's motivated. The point is, is that after the holidays, starting 2021, there's just gonna be much more, that many more motivated sellers because these moratoriums will be lifted by that time. Um, and you know, people are gonna be in a situation where they need help. Um, what is I was, the I was, yeah, I was just going to add like I, and that our last poll, uh, we were asking about your investment strategy. And I know a lot of you guys want to wholesale deals. 
Some of you guys want to build a portfolio. A few of you want to be lenders. Um, and some of you guys want to rehab. One of the most important things is if you learn how to wholesale deals, you could cherry pick the rehabs. Then you could actually keep the ones for your portfolio. So the, the foundation is to learn how to wholesale deals. And, and my biggest mistake was I wanted to build a portfolio years ago in 2007. And one of the things was if I didn't like the area, guess what? I passed on the deal. I had no idea you could wholesale uh, the house. And so I left so much money on the table. So, you know, once you get the foundation, I always think it's important. Um, and then you can really start expanding on what you want to do. So I just want right. to touch base on that. So, and again, the question, aren't Fannie and Freddie Mac's uh, subprime mortgages, are they less favorable to deal with? Guys, you're getting way too caught up in all of it. The idea is in wholesaling is you find a motivated seller and then you have the knowledge or the experience or the partners or mentors or coaches that are going to show you how to do that deal. I don't care if it's subprime or not. I don't care what the mortgage is on it. I don't care if it's a reverse mortgage. I don't care if it's a first time home buyer mortgage. It makes no difference to me. As long as the seller's motivated and there's a situation that I can wholesale the property and make money, that's what we're going to do. So, and these are good questions guys, but again, it's good questions in regards to I'm firing back to really beat that into your guys' brains today that what a niche and I find that holds most people back is you guys have so many questions about so many bigger picture things instead of the basics of like, let me find some zip codes. Let me find some motivated sellers in that zip code that are facing a foreclosure. And then we figure out how to structure the deal once we, you know, once we get in, in touch with them. So we just don't want you guys to get lost in the minutia and all the noise and, and, you know, be, be you know, over watching YouTube videos and things, um, you know, because it's, it's going to keep you guys from being able to get, you know, get your start. So. Yeah. And, um, and the thing is like, we're also even talking about regular deals. Our last uh, three deals that we actually closed were all probate deals. Um, actually uh, the one even before that, it wasn't even probate. They just liked us because we're easy to work with. Uh, when we went under contract, uh, Ryan or myself, like the last two he did, within five minutes, like they got proof of funds. They knew we were serious, right? There's too many people out there that have no idea what they're doing. Um, they're kind of stringing along the homeowners. So you want to make sure you have that credibility too. So I think that's really important. So it's not just foreclosures. It's not... It's not just short sales, but sometimes people just really want to um, buy properties or I'm sorry, sell properties quickly and, yep. and make it easy for them too. So we're going we're to talk about a few property types before we end today. And then again, on Saturday, we're going to be doing, you know, off market deals. We're going to show you guys some actual deals that we've closed recently. Uh, what's the ideal profit margin here for South Florida market? Uh, we like to be between 20 and 25% uh, on our money. And that's, um, that's really, you know, what we look at when we're rehabbing, if I'm wholesaling, there is no profit margin. I don't care what, you know, at the end of the day, as long as I'm making money, I'm not going to pass up on a deal because oh, I'm only going to make 2,500, you know, and, and I don't want to look for wholesale deals that I'm just making 25,000. That's our average. Sometimes we make 50,000 on a wholesale deal. Sometimes we make 5,000. Um, but the majority of the time, you know, we make more. So for wholesale deals, we want to make, um, you know, our average is twenty to twenty-five thousand, and for retail, when we uh, flip and, and rehab properties, we want to make twenty to twenty-five percent on our money. Um, how about down here in South Florida, where most people don't have equity? How do I handle these? Very simple. Those are short sales. If a homeowner needs to sell their property and they don't have equity, um, then that is a uh, that that's a short sale. And you guys, again, you can uh, find a lot of information on short sales on our YouTube channel. Can I work under my name or should I work under a business name for representation and closings? We are not attorneys. We are not um, uh, accountants. So we're just putting that disclaimer out there. But, uh, but Tony, yes, you'd, you'd want to form an, a, a, a corporation. Uh, and we actually have um, someone in our network, um, Jose Ramirez. He owns Advanced Tax Advisors. And uh, he'll be one of our special guests at the boot camp that will talk about what types of, of uh, corporations to file. But you can always contact our office to get Jose Ramirez's information and uh, contact him, you know, directly, he sets up all of our corporations and he'll let you know exactly what corporation to set up. But, um, but for tax purposes, do you need to start the corporation? I mean, technically, no, um, you could wholesale deals and, and put, you know, put your name on it. 
Um, but, uh, but, you know, to, to file a corporation is not um, that expensive to do uh, with the state of Florida. Given the current market and the low inventory, um, would you suggest a higher EMD with a few to no inspection days to increase the chance of attaining a property? That can help uh, in a negotiation of, of you know, dealing with a seller. Um, sometimes if a seller's looking at multiple offers, if you have a higher earnest money deposit and you have less inspection days, uh, then they, they might be willing to take your offer. Uh, but again, when it comes to you know, people that are facing foreclosures, it's rare that, that you know, homeowners necessarily are, are going to necessarily be concerned more um, with, with that aspect. It's gonna be more of an aspect of, of that. They know that, that you, know, you have the knowledge and the resources to help them get out of this you know, foreclosure. Um, but that can, that can help a little bit. Um, how do we get out of the contract without losing the deposit? Very simple. Within your inspection period, if my inspection period is 15 days, and I'm looking for a buyer and on the 14th day, I still haven't found a buyer. I can either contact the seller and ask for more inspection days if they don't want to give them to me. I cancel the contract, I get my deposit back and I'm done. Very simple. Um, what are the payment options besides cash that you can use to purchase uh, a short sale? There are none. It's cash and that's it. That's the only, that's the only way you're going to buy a, a short sale is, is purchasing by cash. So if you're doing short sales, you have to have the cash and you have to do a double closing. You can't do assignments on short sales either, guys. Uh, a, a good majority of deals that are gonna be out there are going to be pre-foreclosures without equity. That's just a fact. Um, we have uh, signed up in our mentor program, our students alone have signed up like another 10 short sales just in the last um, about two, three weeks. And, um, and short sales take a little bit, you know, a little while longer, but uh, they're worth it in the end, and, um, and, and we get really good profit margins on those as well. Um, hard money lenders use a point system. Can you explain to me what the system is and what a benefit is? So I can't take a lot of time to explain hard money lending. Um, you guys, again, you guys can use us, you know, call the office, contact me or Anish. We'd be more than happy, Joshua, to walk you through that. Um, but it's really simple. Hard money lenders, they're, they're going to ask from you some skin in the game. So they're not going to you know, give you 100% of the money. Um, they're going to give you a, a percentage. They usually want to start at 65% of the money. Um, and they'll charge anywhere from two to four points. And they charge anywhere from 12 to 14%, uh, depending upon what, you know, what the structure of the, uh, of the loan is. But again, you guys can follow up with us uh, with that. And what we can do is introduce you direct to hard money lenders and you can hear directly from them what they're gonna be charging you. Um, so as a wholesaler, you have to put money down. Yes, you have to put a deposit down, absolutely. How much marketing dollars do you need to spend a month finding motivated sellers? Uh, we'd probably say on average, what do you think, Nish? About 300 bucks? Yeah, yeah, not much. Tax, letter, Remember. yeah. Yeah, three, three to 500 bucks. Remember, the idea is um, you're the local investor. So we're actually cold calling, knocking on doors. It's just an introduction. Uh, we've done, uh, our budgets are pretty high uh, here at uh, WJL Properties. Uh, but we, you know, mailers is going to cost you a ton. Uh, I can tell you that right now. And the chances of you getting a deal on the first mailer, um, probably not. You know, it's going to take a few. So uh, it depends what your budget is, you know, but you want to build that in. You can't just try it once is what I tell people. Right. Um, Jason's asking, should I invest in a dialer system to start cold calling motivated sellers? Well, um, there's a couple things in that question. The first thing is, is that um, ReFX, which is a software program, we're going to show you guys, we're just going to talk about it today, but we're actually going to show you a demonstration on Saturday um, at the 11 o'clock event on Saturday. We're going to show you how that works. And there is a dialer system within there. But the, the question of should I invest in this and start cold calling motivated sellers? If you have the resources to be able to, you know, and the knowledge to put a property in contract, um, to evaluate the property and know what even price you should put it in contract, to know what you're going to say to those uh, motivated sellers when you call them, to have the resources of, of you know, being able to get that, sh that contract, you know, shopped on your buyer's list, whether you're assigning it or doing a double closing, um, and you have the money to put down your earnest money deposit, you have the title company to do the closing. Sure, if you have all of those steps, uh, then I would suggest, you know, going ahead and getting, getting started. Absolutely. Um, okay. 
I was going to say, why don't we go into a little bit more in the pre presentation? We'll come back to some of the questions. Okay. So we we don't want to. We don't mind answering questions. I I just know that uh, these guys probably don't want a full eight hours of us <laughs> talking about that too. So so we, already, uh, so we already went through assignments. We already went through this. Um, we already talked about double closings versus assignments, which is what most of you guys you know are seeing as wholesaling. Most people say wholesaling is is you know just doing assignments of contracts um but the reality is like anish said the amount of opportunities this is what these big national gurus like cody sperber the clever investor and and these guys don't tell you about assignments of contracts is that the fact of the matter is the amount of deals that you can actually do uh is is much less than what your double closings are and you're going to get much less of the margins on there as well. So, so what are the hot leads? What do we go after? We talked about pre foreclosures with and without equity and guys, pre foreclosure is very simple. The homeowners stop making payments um, on their mortgage and in theory and in, in normal times within about 90 days, they're going to get a notification that they are now being um, uh, sued through a foreclosure lawsuit in order for their lender to take the property back and get their money back since they stopped paying. So you have pre foreclosures with and without equity. Equity is the difference between what the property value is and what they owe. So if they owe 200, but the property is worth 300, they have $100,000 in equity. It's whatever the, the money that goes in the pocket of the homeowner when they sell the property. Okay. Um, and no equity is just the opposite. That's when we do a short sale. Uh, the other hot leads that are going to be, you know, coming up in this market is non underoccupied uh, with equity in state and out of state. So that's tired of being a landlord. There's going to be a lot of people that uh, that finally evict tenants that haven't been paying, um, you know, and and uh, and so there's going to be a lot of motivated sellers as well. Imagine someone living in you know North Carolina right now trying to run a rental property down here in Florida where there's still a moratorium for evictions, um, and they're not able to you know necessarily evict their tenants, um, or even if they are now finally evicting their tenants. Um, then, you know, they've, they've had no income for the last, you know, six months. So there's going to be a lot of motivation there. Guys, we look for motivated sellers. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for properties. We're looking for motivated sellers. Probate. When someone dies, they pass away. Grandma passes away and leaves the property to her, you know, two grandchildren. Um, and uh, through the probate process, the title moves from the grandmother who's deceased to the two grandchildren. And then the grandchildren can decide whether they want to keep it or sell it. And most people are going to be selling those probate properties, um, especially because everybody needs, you know, money right now and cash and people have lost, you know, wages and, and uh, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, probate properties are going to be motivated sellers as well. So how are you going to find these motivated sellers? How do Anish and I and our students find motivated sellers every single day? The number one deal finder in Florida is reFX and I know people always ask questions well, what about prop stream stream and and these other software uh, programs we use this program because it is the most powerful I know prop stream I've worked on prop stream before um, I know a couple other platforms that are out there but we are just fortunate that reFX is the number one deal finder for the state of Florida and it will look through public record and find pre foreclosures probates uh, you can make lists of, of non-underoccupied that are out of state. We're going to show you guys some samples and we're going to run through some searches on reFX uh, on Saturday as well. Okay, so this Saturday, October the 10th, how to find off-market deals. So Anish and I are going to specifically get into reFX. We're going to show you guys some live searches that we do. We're going to create some lead lists and some zip codes that you guys will shout out to us and show you how we do this and how we get started on that. And then we're going to show you guys some actual deals that we've done. We will show you the HUD statements, the profits that we made, what we bought it for, what we sold it for. Um, so that's going to be on, on Saturday. So that's going to be important. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, how many of you guys have already uh, signed up for Saturday's event? Again, it is free. Um, again, we want to get, actually show you real deals. Uh, we're going to use ReaFax. And uh, I know we actually even talked about um, our boot camp at the end of the at the end of the month that we're doing. Uh, why don't we kind of sweeten the pot? I mean, I don't know. How about what do you think about Saturday? If we instead of a membership, why don't we give a ticket to our boot camp? What do you think? 
it. I mean, how many? How right, if, if I get, I mean, really, I mean, wait, think, think about it. You know, I like if that. I get twenty yeses in the chat, then I'll instead of me giving away a membership for the uh, or a membership, how about a a boot camp? So so far, I got three. I got one that says no. <laughs> <laughs> Why not both? Oh, look at that. They're communicating with us right now. <laughs> <laughs> both. I don't know. You want to do both? Fine. You want to? All right. How about you want to give away a membership and a and a boot camp? Seriously. We we want to get these people started. So listen, if that's what you guys need, we'll give away another membership and a boot camp as well. But you guys better show up. We're gonna do yeah, our part. And, you guys have to do your part. And and the reason I'm generous today is because just so you know, because the Heat won. The other day, so I feel pretty good. Uh, my Yankees won last night. You know, as if the Heat win again, who knows what we'll give away? Yeah, you know, a new car. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so make sure. Oh, look at that. Bruce wants your Ryan's car. <laughs> uh, we're we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the link for Saturday's event. So uh, just make sure it's free again. Um, so there's no cost. You just have to show up. How about that? So. Um, I think that's always important, and and you'll have to hold us to uh, the free boot camp also. Yeah. Too, so. so just the last so what, couple of things here, guys, yeah. um, and we'll we'll answer the rest of the questions in the Q and A. But um, you know, to give you a kind of an overall picture of what you need to get started, um, hard money lenders require anywhere from thirty five to ten percent down payment. They want skin in the game if you're going to be doing a rehab. Um, so you know, to find a hard money lender to work with. Um, as long as you have some skin in the game, you have some cash, uh, then you can work with them. Otherwise, you know, finding a private lender, uh, Anish and I are basically the private lenders for all of our students. We put up 100% of the money on our student deals and split the deals, split the profits 50-50. Um, and that's how Anish and I kind of started out too. We were able to find private lenders that put up 100% of the money, but it's very difficult to find anyone these days to put up 100% um, of the money. You need to have a team. You got to have your title company. You got to have a, a contractor if you need them, if you're, especially if you're going to be doing a, a rehab. Um, if you're arguing prices with banks, you need to have a, a home inspector and to have a good appraiser on the team to do an appraisal on the property to, to fight the, the, the bank's pricing and negotiate with them. Um, you need to have your, your you know, real estate attorney if, the, if that's needed as well. Um, you know, so, uh, and, and your hard money lenders. Um, so you got to have a team. You got to have knowledge. So you have to know, you know, how to put a property in contract, how to analyze the property, um, you know, the difference of how to structure that contract between a pre foreclosure with and a pre foreclosure without. Uh, and once you learn these things, you know, it, it's not rocket science. It's just, you know, the difficulty in getting started completely on your own. It, it's, it's extremely difficult. I mean, I wouldn't have been able, even though I had been in real estate and had experience, if I didn't have, you know, my business partner Anish when we first got started again and Bill and Jan at Bria, you know, mentoring me and showing me the little nuances and things that I need to do. I mean, we picked it up quick and within six months we were on our way and, and we were, you know, um, closing a lot of deals and making a lot of money. But um, you got to have that knowledge or people around you that have that knowledge. You got to know how to effectively market to sellers, know how to build your buyers list, how to analyze properties, for, like I said, fill out contracts and how to build your credibility. So... Those are all the opportunities um, here. So here's your opportunities here for the boot camp we've been talking about. It's a two day intensive event. Um, and uh, October 31st and November 1st is the next boot camp. And then the last boot camp of the year is December 12th and 13th. Those are Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, we're, we're very excited. Uh, we did our first online, uh, Boot camp. Uh, actually, I guess that was last month, wasn't it? Or I don't even know all the months uh, feel the same. So um, it was pretty awesome. Um, again, we're pivoting just like you need to, right? Uh, this whole COVID thing is definitely, you know, kind of literally knocked us around a little bit. And the idea is to adapt. And, you know, for Ryan and I, um, we were a little nervous about trying to do something, you know, online for a boot camp. But what we realized was, you know, using technology, we didn't skip a beat. The only difference was we couldn't actually walk the property. So usually in our live boot camps, uh, the pricing is $995. I know some of you guys have been uh, um, to our live boot camps. Oh, 
by the way, it is live October 31st, my bad, in-person boot camps, I should say, because someone did ask me, oh, you guys are not going to be live? Of course, we're going to be live. So our in-person boot camps, we were able to walk properties. So one of the things we did, and it worked out fantastic, was that we pre-recorded the properties. Ryan went out there with our contractor. So you actually felt like you were actually at the properties. Um, otherwise, we didn't skip a beat. And that's why we actually uh, lowered our pricing because of COVID, uh, kind of give back. And, you know, our normal pricing is the $425 for members, uh, $495 for non-members. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're, I don't know why I'm in such a giving mood today. Because <laughs> his teams are winning. I know it very well. When his teams yeah, are winning, you don't have to talk about anything. Yeah, exactly. All I know is like if, if, if the Lakers win tonight, then I'll be like, oh, all the prices go up. Uh, no. <laughs> On that portion. So you can also sign up for our boot camp. Um, you know, hopefully you'll be, you know, I know we're giving away a boot camp Saturday. Um, we could also... I mean, they are winning, so, I mean, we could do... A... Let's do this. If enough of you guys show up, okay, and we'll know who's here today and who shows up on Saturday, and we're not going to even give you guys a number because we want you guys to all be like, okay, we all have to show up collectively. <laughs> as, as long as we get enough people from today that shows up on Saturday showing us you guys really want to get started, for those of you guys that really want to get started on Saturday that you attend, um, let's give them a special pricing on the boot camp. Yep. Absolutely. Do you want to give it? <laughs> we'll give it to them Saturday. Yeah. You got to show up on Saturday. Absolutely. So somebody's going to win a membership. Somebody's going to win a free seat to the boot camp, and everybody else is going to get an opportunity at a discounted price um, for the boot camp. But guys, you got you got to show up. You guys got to show up. Let me um, go through. We got just a few questions here, like six yeah. questions um, left. How do you work with realtors as an investor? From prior experience, it's very difficult finding realtors who will assist with investment properties. Guys, Anish and I are licensed, so no offense to any licensed real estate agents that are on here, but 99.9% .9 of real estate agents that both Anish and I have met in the last 20 years know zero about working with investors. That's not what they're trained for. That's not what they're meant to do. Real estate agents are meant to do one of two things, either take someone's property and list it for a ridiculous price, as high as price as possible um, on the uh, MLS, and sell it for a really high price so they can get as much commission as possible, or they take their buyers to properties that are listed to try to get their buyers to buy one of those properties, um, which again, they're, they're just making their 3% commission. So the reality is, is that, you know, uh, over the years, Anish and I have maybe found a couple of real estate agents that bring us properties and stuff, but we've had to work with them. We've had to educate them. We've had to give them kind of the knowledge that they need and, and really, you know, show them, um, you know, what, what we're really looking for as investors, but here's the spoiler alert. You start training your real estate agents to do that stuff. They're going to start really understanding why they shouldn't be real estate agents and why they should do what you do. And then they're just going to end up doing what you're doing. So, uh, so just be aware of that as well. What's the most common mistake that people make doing their first deal? Um, <laughs> I mean, I would the say first, not analyzing I, the property correctly and offering yeah. way too much, and no one wants to buy it. I, I would say the the um, being afraid to even make an offer, meaning they're too scared, right? Like they they the analysis paralysis and and I'll admit that was me. So you know, oh, um, let me look at it. Let me figure out why they're in foreclosure. Why this? So I think it's just um, being so worried. Remember, if you get it under contract inspection period, you always have an out. So, yep. Yep. But that's, you know, that's the thing guys is that, you know, you gotta, you gotta really know and understand how, how to analyze a property. Cause Anish and I, we get newbie investors, wholesalers all the time, send us properties. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm literally looking at this property. Like there is absolutely no way that I or anybody else is going to make money on this, you know, at the prices that they're asking for. And, and that's mostly just because, you know, they, the other mistake they made was to not really negotiate with the seller. The seller wasn't motivated, right? If you don't get a good price for a property, that means your seller's not motivated. So that might even be the root of the first mistake that people make is not really working for sale by owners. Forget it. Most of the for sale by owners are not motivated. You got to find a motivated seller to work with. Um, Didi's asking about, we talked about door knocking. Um, are we doing it in a COVID environment? Absolutely. 
we just had on, we have a Facebook group for our students. Um, it's, it's the Bria students only. So please don't ask to join because it's only for students. Uh, if you become a student, you can join, of course. But um, Anish, I don't know if you saw the post. We had a couple students that went out this weekend, some of them yeah. for the first time. One of them has been going out, um, you know, over the last month and a half. And they both said that, you know, if anybody, anybody that hasn't gotten started is thinking that people aren't going to answer the door, you'll find a couple of people here and there that want to talk through, you know, the glass, you know, door or the window or something. But the majority of people, you put a mask on, you knock on their door, you stand back six feet, you pull the mask down and smile so they can see you and then put your mask back up. And funny enough, um, Anish, two of our students, uh, when I was talking to them, uh, Matthew and Lydia, they, uh, they actually said, well, you know, instead of wearing a mask, what if we wore the face shield, which still you know, keeps people safe, that, that, that's still acceptable, uh, but that way they can see our face. And I said, hey, that sounds great. You know, yeah, that's they can a really good idea, people. actually. <laughs> Yeah, I told you, our, our students, we have some smart students. They come up with some pretty good ideas. I, I didn't even think about that, too. Do I need to register with the state to get funds from a hard money lender? No. 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 Nope. Uh, also, I did get some private chats. So um, I know some, some of the people that actually sent me a private message saying they can't make it to Saturday's event because of work and they want to take advantage of the special pricing. So what I'm going to do is if you call us or our office or you email me directly i will give you what that special pricing is today and you could sign up today and we'll send you an invoice that way and in, that way you could still take advantage of the pricing because i know uh i had two people messaging me saying hey you know i work all day saturday i don't want to miss it so we'll go ahead and do that you could either even call our office and i'll put that number in the chat that could be and if you want to sign up today, we'll, we'll give you the special pricing, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> you can watch the replay Saturday uh, on YouTube too. So that way, um, you know, it gets you your seat too. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's always important. Uh, the other thing is I, uh, I know a lot of people are interested in coaching. Uh, one of the things is, you know, obviously Ryan and I put up 100% of the money for the deals for our students. We're truly a one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, program. We only take six students per month. Uh, the reason we only take six students per month, there's only two of us. Uh, we do have financing options for your uh, tuition. Uh, we're averaging over $25,000 per student deal. Um, we might even showcase maybe Saturday. I think that other deal was over $45,000 or $50,000 that uh, Gus made. And we had a couple deals that just recently closed. Yep. Um, but we're, we're really a hands-on company. Uh, hopefully one of the things is you checked out our Google reviews. I do ask, like, I'll probably send you guys, whoever attended the event today, if you guys don't mind giving us a five-star Google review for today's webinars or any events that you've gone to, now you guys know these are real uh, Google reviews. I always get that question. How do you guys have so many five-star? We actually ask people to, to see if they'll, you know, give us a five-star. And if you, if you don't feel comfortable giving us a five star, you could personally reach out to me because I want to know where we dropped the ball. You know, for Ryan and I, as the owners, was our staff, you know, um, you know, we didn't do something right. We just want to make sure. We're about service first and foremost. So I think that's really important. And it also gives us good feedback. Um, again, my email's uh, in the chat. If you have ideas of, you know, other webinars that you guys like, let us know. Uh, again, we have a lot more webinars coming up. Uh, we do have our corporate webinars, uh, um, teaching people on different things from insurance, accounting. Tomorrow, that's also, you know, it is our monthly meeting tomorrow. So we do have REI Black Book. So that's actually what we're using for our wholesale business. We know about Podio, but REI Black Book has been phenomenal. If you want to really automate your um, your business, your wholesale business, and then you want to have VAs, and you know, as you're growing, you're going to have you know acquisition people, you're not going to want to miss tomorrow. So that's one of the things that I would definitely tell you to register. It is seven o'clock. So one of the things that we have noticed, if you're like Ryan and I, I know you guys, a lot of you guys are working all day. You're zoomed out. I get it. But what I'm saying is. You don't want to miss these events in the evenings and and you know 
I know it's, sometimes it's been a long day. I just think that you should really go out there and, and again, it's gonna change your business and there's no cost. So make sure you sign up for you know, tomorrow's event, um, Saturday's events coming up. If you wanna call our office and set up an appointment um, for mentoring, one of the things I am doing also is, so I'm doing phone calls, I'm doing Zoom meetings. And if you wanna do an in-person meeting, we can. Uh, we are following the protocols of wearing a mask uh, in our office. I'm open for all three. So uh, usually I spend an hour with you because you're gonna have a ton of questions. Um, maybe two hours, I've spent as much as three hours with someone, deals, all the above. Um, I know, the, I know, you know some of the things I'm even looking at chat. The debate tomorrow is at nine o'clock. So I watch, like, I watch the, the show, quote unquote, uh, also. So I know the vice president debate is at nine o'clock. Our event is at seven o'clock. We will be done by 8.30. So learn a little bit and then, you know, get your popcorn, your pizza, <laughs> your Twitter, and then you can watch the debate. So let's just make sure, you know, you, you join us too. But again, you can call our office for appointments. Uh, on our coaching well, program too. Yeah, real quick. So we have some questions coming in and, and we actually have yeah. some, some uh, a video to show you guys, give you a little bit of an idea of our mentor program. So yeah. do you provide leads, buyers lists and programs for students in the mentorship program? Yes, we actually, uh, with our students, we do absolutely everything with them where we help them form their corporation. We help them with their marketing, a logo, a company name, a business card, what farm area they're gonna be you know, farming properties in, what types of properties we go after, how to use reeffects, how to find those motivated sellers, scripts to how to talk to them, how to door knock. Uh, we have a whole COVID-19 marketing strategy that we've put together as a series of letters and door knocks and cold calls and these sort of, sort of things as well. Um, we help people you know, that come in that, that wanna scale their business and bring in you know, VA. So for some of you guys, if you have some resources, if you've done some deals, but you just wanna grow your business, we also work um, with you as well. Um, and uh, when our student, you know, gets, when we get a property, uh, we help them analyze the property. We help them fill out the contract. Um, in the beginning, our office even fills out contracts for our students. So it's done correctly. And then uh, we shop the, the, the deal on our buyer's list. We sell the property. Anish and I put up 100% of the money and we split the profits with our students 50-50. So there's a, there's a lot there that's, um, that's included. And uh, there's a national um, educator, speaker. He's been around for a long time. His name is Chris Goff. Some of you guys have probably seen him on YouTube. Um, he's a good friend of ours. And, um, and I just wanted to show you guys a quick video. And this hey, is this what is he Chris has to say Goff, about and us. And I've been in real estate for Can over 20 years and have flipped over 500 deals. Now I have traveled across the country and I'm here to tell you that one of the best real estate mentoring programs that I've seen is in South Florida taught by people I trust, and that is the BRIA and MD RIA mentoring program. Now, coaching isn't a guaranteed path to success. It requires work, dedication, and most importantly, you must get the knowledge of what to do and what not to do. Without these three pieces, you could fall into a high percentage of people that fail, leading to frustration, time wasted, and an education of bad knowledge. But there is a way. There is a formula, and if you're in the South Florida area and want to learn faster, work smarter, and profit greater, then you need to join the BRIA and MD RIA mentoring program where you will receive the best visual hands-on training in the area. Not only do they have an outstanding program, they have become great friends that I trust in the business. They're the only people that I know that puts their money where their mouth is. And that's by putting up all the money on every profitable deal. No joke. So if you're looking to fast track your success and do it the right way, you need to reach out to them right now and see if they have any available spots. Hey, even I started with a mentor. So that's just a nice, nice uh, little video that Chris did for us uh, about our mentoring programs down here. Um, like Anish was saying, you know, what, what makes us different than everybody else? We put up 100% of the funds on every deal. 
Uh, that's Ernesto uh, and Adriana on their first deal. You can almost see the numbers there. It was a little over $31,000 profit. Uh, and that was the first deal that they got coming into the mentor program. That's Tyra Bacon. Um, she's a senior student now. She's an advanced student. She's doing deals in multiple markets. Um, so we're very happy of her success. Um, that was probably like seven years ago, six years ago. She's been around for a little while. We are a true one-on-one -on -one mentorship program. Uh, that's Violet Perez. Uh, Manish, what, what, do you remember the, the profit we did on that deal? That one's 57,000. And right now, as one of our senior students, um, she's, she's probably gonna have the biggest deal of the year, actually. They're gonna, um, they're looking at a little over a hundred and, I wanna say $110,000 on this deal. So, that's and that's wholesaling. Cool. Yep. Yep, that's a wholesale that's deal that's closing. I want to say two or three weeks. Yeah. They're not all like that, but that's a good one. <laughs> um, Mac and Catherine, that was their first rehab uh, that we did with them. And I think that was, what was the profit on that one? That one was a little over 40. Uh, that rehab took two weeks. So that was probably our fastest rehab ever. Yeah. That's Taryn Ward. Um, she now, as an advanced student, um, is working directly with Anish and I um, at WJL Properties and helping us uh, to uh, expand that um, business. She also uh, has one of the co-founders of the Women Wholesaling Houses, the largest Facebook group, and I think they have over 25,000 members. Yep, over 25,000. So ladies, you know, make sure you sign up. Uh, I think they're in 15 markets now, actually. Yeah. So. And Taryn was a single mother of three. She came into the mentor program. We have financing options um, to come into the mentor programs, which you guys make appointments with Anish and he'll go through all of this. There's a lot of information to go through. But the, re the reality is that the opportunity is here, guys, the opportunity to really get ready. You're asking a lot of questions like, how do I get prepared for this you know, 2021 market? Here's your opportunity. And uh, we split the profits 50-50. That's Denise and Lucian. You guys saw them in the video. They were in uh, their white Seg 5 shirts. That's their company. They were jumping up and down in joy because we just did a $82,000 profit on a rehab. This was another wholesale deal that we did with them that was, um, that was a little over 42,000. I think it was 43 and some change. Uh, so they've done very, very well. They're doing their own deals now. They just finished a, um, a rehab project in, um, I think it's up in Deerfield. Tamarack. Yeah, oh, Tamarack. Okay. Tamarack. And, um, uh, and I think they're, they're putting that on the market um, this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So guys, yeah, like you, are, said, you know, yeah. And, and the, the one, one of the things that um, in general for Ryan and I, you know, um, we don't take everybody in. Uh, we want to make sure it's a good fit. It's a win-win. You work way too hard for your money is number one. Our whole business plan, I always tell everyone, uh, growing up from New Jersey, I think everything's a scam. Uh, so I would say, wait, they're local, they put up the money, what's the catch? Our business grows if your business grows too. So if you're doing deals, we're doing deals is really what, we want to make it a win-win. Um, I know these other companies, we kind of joke about it, if they could fill up the American Airlines Arena with 20,000 people, they would. Um, that's just not our business plan. So our business plan, take less students and get you to perform. One of the other things is don't let, you know, whether it's COVID or family, uh, I'm going to use that for my own personal uh, experience was that they wanted me to be, go back to corporate America when I lost everything. And, you know, if I would have listened to them, I would be probably in a terrible job that I hated in a cubicle. Um, there's gonna be people telling you why not to do this or be in real estate. The first question I, I would tell you is, where are they financially, right? Are they financially successful? Um, usually when I found out, you know, or the people that told me not to do it, um, including my family, they were not financially set where they needed to be. Um, I know COVID's been since March. We're still doing deals. It is October. What you don't want, ha want to happen is, it's gonna be January or February. Um, you're still trying to figure out what to do. You're not in a program. The idea is to get geared in and dialed in now. When the moratorium ends, you know, at the end of the, uh, the year, you're gonna be ready. You don't wanna be playing catch up. So whether it's our boot camp, whether it's being a member, whether it's our coaching, remember, we're also cash buyers. 
Uh, we do have WJL partnership. We could actually partner with you if you want to sell us properties also. So there's a lot of different ways to work with us. So what, you know, what I always look for people right now is really um, to get off the sidelines, right? I know Ryan will tell you, we've had people, you know, that have been part of our organization for eight years. They've been coming to monthly meetings and they still have never made an offer, right? Analysis paralysis. So I always say, when's it going to be your time, right? And, and you really just want to uh, take control of that too. So, you know, for us, you know, there's enough room for everyone to make money. That's our attitude. And again, we're not high pressure to join our program. We know what, what other companies offer. And, um, you know, come meet with us and make sure we're a good fit for you too, so. And, um, and with that, guys, um, we greatly appreciate everybody attending today. We've gotten to everybody's questions. So um, hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow night is the seven o'clock meeting um, of using REI Blackbook to scale your business on Saturday is the how to find off market deals where Anish and I are going to be going through actual deals that we do uh, and then making the offer for the boot camp as well. So hopefully we'll see you guys, if not tomorrow night, we'll see you guys on Saturday. Great. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Go eat. Yes. <laughs>